Once again, Arthur Bergeron, who is going to present, do another presentation for us this afternoon. And uh, it's the second part of the one that we had last month called Living, Where you, Living With What You Want With The Care You Need, part two, staying at home. So um, this time we have Sa Sandy Cordovi and, and Kathleen, Kathleen Samway, who are going to be speakers this afternoon and welcome and thank you for joining us this afternoon and thank you for joining us this afternoon and uh, well, and Joyce, thank you ado, for all this hospitality which you always extend welcome. to us and we really appreciate you're it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Hello. Uh, my name is Arthur Bergeron. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. Myrick O'Connell has about 65 lawyers. I'm the one that does elder law. Uh, I come here a lot because my paralegal grew up here, Brenda Costa, she's right there. Her parents are off of, live off of the Vineyard Haven, Edgartown Road, so usually if you can't find me, you can usually find her. She's down here almost all the time. Although I found myself being here about once every two weeks now. Uh, with me is Kathleen Samways uh, from, the, from, the, uh, from uh, Vineyard, the Vineyard Nursing Association. Uh, and Sandy Cordolby, um, who has been here for ages and ages, and now has her, she and her partner who is also here. Ellen Toomey, Ellen, is it Ellen? Yeah. 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 Beth, oops, sorry, have their own business as geriatric care managers. We're going to talk about that a little bit under our definition of terms. So I didn't think this many people were going to come to this one. Uh, I, was, I, was, I knew this was, I didn't know how interesting this topic would be, but evidently it's interesting. So the purpose of this topic is to really talk about uh, home care and other kinds of people services that can come to your home um, and how you can get those services other than pay, paying for them completely out of pocket, which is what many people think is kind of the only alternative in most of these cases. Maybe that's why everybody came uh, today. Um, and I've asked both of these folks to be here to comment on these programs as appropriate. I've told them that I'm going to be directing some questions to them and make them stand up, but that at any point, if they've got something that I should be saying and I'm not, they're supposed to yell or wave or something, so if I don't see them, point them to me so I can have them stand up and talk about this. So, we're going to talk about our friends, Frank and Mary. And by the way, I don't have a clicker today, so Brenda is my clicker. If this, is, if this seems a little disjointed, we haven't done this program before, but you know, that happens a lot here. This becomes our test, so if it's a little, John, a little choppy, that's the way it goes. So, you know, we're talking about our friends Frank and Mary. You know Frank and Mary. Uh, they and their children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Next slide. They've got assets. They've got a house that's here in the vineyard. It's not huge, you know, but it's but it's the vineyard, so it's worth four hundred thousand dollars. And he has an IRA of one hundred fifty, and they have an annuity of about one hundred thousand dollars in bank accounts of seventy five. And his income uh, is two thousand dollars per month, fifteen hundred from his social security and five hundred from his pension. And his wife's income is a thousand dollars per month from social security. She'd normally only be entitled to uh, 750 as half of his, but she worked and had her, and so she's entitled to her own Social Security check of $1,000 a month. So, uh, next slide. And their state plan is very simple right now. Everything they hold is joint, um, and their goal is uh, if one of them dies, everything goes to the other, and if the two of them dies, uh, everything goes into the, uh, goes to the kids. Next slide. And their, and their real goal is that they want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. So does that sound familiar to a lot of people? Okay, so the question is how can they do that? 
So we're going to talk about the kinds of care that is available to them uh, to try to keep them at home because, because most government programs are designed to help them do that. The last thing the gov any government agency wants is also the last thing that Frank and Mary want, and that is to go to a nursing home. So that there are a whole set of programs. We talked a lot last time uh, about going to assisted living because there comes a point where if you, you, know, you really want to be independent, and you, don't, and, and you should be, but it isn't safe to be at home. It isn't safe to be at home, and that's the case when really assisted living is, is an appropriate option. One of the things we've talked about this summer, uh, when I was over in Oak Bluffs, is we talked about programs to really help fix up your house, to make your house more safe. I and mean, we also talked about financing for that, but that's kind of not this program. We, we have, that program is available. By the way, just one other kind of general editorial comment. Uh, I now have a YouTube channel up. It's called Elder Law, Frank and Mary, of all things. Uh, and on it are 40 of the programs that we have done, and one of them is that one, the one that really talks about um, what kinds of improvements you can make to your home to make it more safe to you, and also the kind of financing options that are available. We talk about reverse mortgages. We also talk about a, spe a special state program that will loan you up to $30,000. Uh, no, so it's like a little reverse mortgage. No payments. You pay it off when you die, specifically just to do improvements to your house to make it more accommodating to you if you have if you are becoming if you have disabilities or if you need to adapt the house. Next slide. So if you need a little care, we're going to start there, and we're going to talk. About, we're going to start off with three kinds of basic definitions of terms. ASAP. You need to know about the ASAP. The ASAPs are are aging services access points. Um, there is one that covers every region in the Commonwealth. They are nonprofits who do this with by contract with the state. So these are your state dollars at work. Right? Uh, the one for here is Elder Services of the Cape and Islands. How many people have heard of that entity? Raise your hand. Oh, that's not enough. That's not enough. You need to know about these people because they are the great geek gatekeepers of just about all the money that you can find to help you as you get older. And it's your tax dollars at work. They want to talk to you. Right? So you want to call them. The other is the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. That's a state entity which provides a lot of this funding. Um, and then there's GCMs. You need to know what that term means. Would you ever know what a GCM is? Raise your hand. Oh boy, it's her. It's a, <laughs> it's a geriatric care manager. These are people, uh, usually former nurses and social workers, who have decided that they, what they want to do, because of typically this is what they did when they were nurses or social workers, is work with old fo older folks. Not old folks, right? Older, like me, you know, not old like my father, right? but older folk who want to figure out what combination of social and economic and program things can allow them to be what they want to be, to be at home or to be in assisted living or to be wherever, and how to figure out how to coordinate all of that with family members. So that's kind of a, that's a broad definition of GCM, but could you elaborate on that a little bit, Sandy? Just okay. so you know what this is. And now, I, this I, is, no, this is not an ad for Sandy Cordoba. She may be really terrible. She seems to be good. I mean, I talk to her a lot, but she may be awful, but at least she can tell you about geriatric care managers, because she's kind of the first one on the island. Why do I go after that? She's the first one on the island that's actually been willing to do this. This has actually very, become very common in central Massachusetts, where I do a lot of work. Sandy? As a geriatric care manager, by the way, I am not a former nurse. I am a nurse. And as of today at 11 o'clock this morning, I am a certified case manager. I passed the boards this morning. Holy cow. I opened Horizons Geriatric Care Management with my business partner, Beth Toomey, who's in the back with a, um, by You're the wave, piano. Wave, that's her. Wave, and if, um, if you didn't get a pamphlet, Beth has lots of them. She's in the back by the piano. So what a geriatric care manager is, is an advocate for elders. We have studied and learned all the programs that are available to help elders in our community. Um, in the community of Martha's Vineyard, I think that you know that there's a whole lot of services available to elders. Um, and if you, an elder may hire us or their family or their kids may hire us to go in and help and try to help navigate mom and dad through a very complex medical system of formal and informal caregivers. Informal caregivers may be family members that are trying to help you, neighbors, church, friends, volunteers, and stuff. And then formal caregivers may be things like the VNA, 
or somebody that you're paying to come in and help you. So geriatric care managers come in, we do a big assessment, we look at everything in your life sort of, and, um, and we make recommendations for areas where we might be able to help you with some enhanced services that will make it possible for you to be home, be safer at home, have a better quality of life, get out of the house if you're not driving anymore, those kinds of things. So we do a big assessment and then we sit with you and we say, what would you like us to help you with? If it's bringing in somebody to help you with shopping and laundry and things like that, then we'll go to the VNA or we'll go to one of the other programs on the island where we have a small group of people that are private people within the community that do that kind of work and we help you find what you need. So that's what we are, is we're advocates. And by the way, we're going to take all questions at the end and Sandy was just reminding me to talk slower because she's the only person here on the island who talks faster than I do. So she was reminding me. So I'll, I'll try to do that. So in general, you it's need to kind of know Sandy those terms. And, and, GC, and, and GCMs or geriatric care managers may be able to help you kind of figure that out because if you're getting older, you know, this is a, this is a, this is a one-way road and it ends with death. So the goal is, and we all know we're going to die. That's I've said many times. That's why I like dealing with older people because we all get that. We're going to die. Your kids don't know that. They don't even believe that you're going to die, right? They tell you all the time, oh, I don't want to talk about that, Mara. You're not going to die. Well, give me a break, you know, because you want to talk about it, right? So anyway, you know, it's kind of, the goal isn't to not die. I have one client, or occasionally I'll have a client whose estate plan involves not dying. I'll tell them, okay, we'll try that. Maybe that'll work, but, you know, not necessarily. I only know one guy who did that, and he actually came back, you know, but, but that's a different, so, 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 you know, you, it, this is not about not dying. This is trying to be, I always tell people, it's like God decides the number of days, we decide how to live them. It's, tr it's trying to make every day that you've got as good as it can be, knowing you don't get to decide the number of days. Next slide. So, basic home care. Um, if by calling the ASAP, the Aging Services Access Point, um, you can, and Jackie Cage, who, who runs it, I was speaking to today, and I'm going to comment, actually, about a program that I didn't know existed until I had this conversation with Jackie today. Only on the vineyard does this exist. But by virtue of just being old, I think it's just 65, if I recall correctly, is the cut, you are um, eligible to receive some home care, some basic home care, as long as you don't make too much money. You're allowed to, to receive basic home care, which is about three hours per week, or if you can demonstrate that you have significant needs, or needs that go beyond that, home care that equals up to six hours a week. Basic is called basic. Um, advanced is called ECOP. Um, I, it, it enhanced community options, right? And, it, and once again, the goal of it is if you can demonstrate that you just need some help, right? You need some help maybe dressing, or making a meal, you know, or doing basic stuff at home. If you can demonstrate that, then you can get this, not by virtue of being poor. Next slide. 